2020, I become a fake teacher. Part 21, August, I start the school year. Administration, Principal Hillbilly. Curriculum Supervisor, Miss Moon. Department of Math and Science, Miss Cat Gastro, Mr. Dutch, Mr. Spud Spank, Mr. Zenslack. Department of English and History, Miss Guerrero, Mr. Kincaid, Mr. Pecker, Mr. Pleats. A weekend separated my orientation at a sister school from my first day reporting to the Hummingbird Academy, and part of me forgot how stupid a one-room schoolhouse looked. When I walked in for the first time, I saw the familiar layout from Coyote Academy of a giant computer lab with every other seat marked off for social distancing. Hummingbird Academy was significantly larger, and, I later learned, the largest of the five charter high schools. There was already a smattering of teachers, but no students, and I guessed to take a seat anywhere I wanted to listen to the coming spiel from our principal. Eventually, a loud, portly, and unkept woman with unappealing cleavage, similar to ribbed punching ball balloons with the rubber straps, lumbered in and introduced herself as Principal Hillbilly, immediately demanding we enter her digits into our phones ahead of any morning we may be running late. Yep, even with no students in the building, Principal Hillbilly set an expectation that she now controlled every minute of our schedules. Every afternoon thereafter warmed up to a swarm of adults simmering at the front door until the clock struck the exact minute we were allowed to exit the building. Principal Hillbilly squandered her first impression on other topics important to her, like her dumbass adult children, her two redneck divorces, her alleged boyfriend, who is a principal at a district school, and the times she purportedly stopped school shootings by staying so intuitive and street smart. That first day was the most we ever saw Principal Hillbilly outside her office because she also feared COVID-19 and had a sycophantic underling with the auspicious title of curriculum supervisor. Miss Moon was Principal Hillbilly's right-hand woman who stood next to her throughout this opening morning monologue, nodding along and punching the air at every offbeat remark. Principal Hillbilly encouraged us to make lesson plans with the remaining time and retreated to her office. Miss Moon reiterated we were to make lesson plans with the remaining time and retreated to her desk at the back of the computer lab. I realized the remaining time was literally 7 hours and 45 minutes and an online curriculum didn't require lesson plans. So I also guessed to take a seat anywhere and surf the internet until the exact minute I was allowed to exit the building. We were all stuck in this drafty one-room schoolhouse for the foreseeable future with nothing to do besides observe the assignments trickling in from students working from home. And the assignments trickling in were a drip, not a stream. Since we were a credit recovery charter school on the south side of Tucson, most our students lacked consistent internet access or needed to work longer hours at their essential service jobs to compensate for COVID's impact on their parents. Responding to the flow of online assignments probably took 20 minutes a day. Somehow our whole existence was predicated on appearing as a real school when all we did was write credit slips to students who passed online courses and award freebie high school diplomas to students who the government wanted available for essential service jobs. Each online course had one project which was very loosely defined and required a teacher and student to briefly communicate on expectations. For English classes, that meant an essay from any topic covered in the course. These essays were the only piece of student work that required grading beyond pressing OK after a student finished all their clicks. And for a while, I took them seriously. However, students eventually called and complained because a precedent from years past had students trained that they could copy and paste their essays. Hummingbird students possessed literally no patience for even a single rewrite. Principal Hillbilly dispatched Miss Moon to tell me and the other newbie teachers to just apply a passing grade of 70% to any copy and pasted essay and reasoned that knowing where to find information on the internet was a legitimate academic skill. I told myself I only needed to be as ethical as the company cutting my checks, cracked my knuckles, and made muscle memory of the keystroke that confirmed 70%. 
all of us sharing the 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. schedule was due to COVID's effect on the school year. Normally, our one-room schoolhouse on the south side of Tucson would be open to three cascading sessions of students. Customers, which is how our internal documents referred to students, would choose to come in from 7 a.m. to noon, from noon to 5 p.m., or from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., and all of us teachers would rotate through so at least one content teacher was available at all times. My normal schedule, with hours I worked later in the year, would have been 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. with a half-hour lunch and a short planning day on Friday. Fridays were only available to students by request and were otherwise for teachers. We teachers participated in a lot of fake planning. I came to understand the ubiquitous buzz about an initiative or deliverable that always disappeared before its due date as the pageantry of putting on a fake school for the benefit benefit of business in Arizona. Somebody from under the tent of auditing could come in and ask, what are you working on? And we would always have an answer like, putting strategies into a binder to support special education and English second language learning. In this environment, the faculty was slow to make friends. Or maybe we weren't used to expressionless masked faces and needed more time to suss each other out. I came to know the teachers in my department before anybody else. This is kind of fucked up, right? I asked Mr. Pecker, a handsome young English teacher with an unfortunately phallic sounding name that students love to mock. Indeed it is, he said, always speaking with an air of academics. Mr. Pecker knew I was commenting on our educator jobs being fake, and he provided some personal goal setting. I love teaching, and this will get my foot in the door. I plan on writing real lessons that I will take with me when I eventually earn my professorship at a community college. I just love sports, said Mr. Pleats, an equally handsome young history teacher who walked over to join our conversation now that the ice was broken by me acknowledging our educator jobs were entirely fake. He continued, my girlfriend landed her dream job in Tucson, so I had to move with her and our dog from Florida. I had no idea I was qualified to teach history. We all shared a laugh. But... While our educator jobs were fake as fuck, these two young, just-out-of-college studs were the real deal. They had genuine hearts, empathy, and intelligence in spades. Mr. Pecker passionately exposed our students to classic literature every chance he got, and Mr. Pleats, with his southern drawl, was always there to support anybody who needed help passing time throughout our boring marathon days by sustaining a conversation about sports, his dog, or his girlfriend's career. And Miss Moon, while supervising the curriculum of every department, took a special interest in English and spent most of her time with us. Remember this for later. She was a 50-year-old Native American woman who was still sexy. I liked her jet black hair, her firmly petite frame, and the way she barked orders all day. She quickly revealed herself as the author of that text I received goading COVID into giving us its best shot, because after we officially exchanged numbers, she followed up with a lot of Republican propaganda against masks and social distancing. Finally, our department rounded out with Miss Guerrero. She was a cantankerous old history teacher from a bygone era, fired from a district school after she dispensed corporal punishment against a disrespectful teenager. My colleagues thought she hated students, but a teacher doesn't show up on Valentine's Day with a headband of springy hearts, or on St. Patrick's Day with a headband of springy four-leaf clovers because they hate students. No, to me, Miss Guerrero just wanted school to look and feel like school. That would never happen at the Hummingbird Academy.